Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We are built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. There's a lot that goes into every episode that we produce here at Dirt Tracks TV. And sometimes when we're trying to pump out more and more content and cool stuff for you to watch, we overlook some of the intricate details and the nitty gritty stuff that really is Dirt Tracks TV. And sometimes it's not just the details, but it's the people behind the scenes. And for this episode, I wanna let Graham tell a bit more of the story because truth be told, the mud racer was all his idea. And so it really should be him who has the last word. There's a lot of stuff that happened uh, during the last mud race that happened behind the scenes and a lot of things that a lot of people didn't get to see. And one of them is the amount of hours that it took to get this bike to where it was and, and being competitive. We just went and got his hair cut and his makeup done. <laughs> <laughs> he got had a makeup. Yeah. That's what he was just saying. That's what I'm getting that's, stick with. Yeah, that's what he was saying. I missed the cameraman. Uh, tennis performance has been around for about, um, I suppose, five or six years now. A lot of it is just family, right? We started it just me and Luke like four or five years ago for Give It A Go. Luke is uh, Steve's uh, business partner. They work together and Luke's the muscle, basically. Steve's, he's, he's more of like the scientist. What started me into mud racing is because I had two young kids and we couldn't trail ride with the kids, but we could take them racing. The engines just started, to be honest, me having a Kawasaki and trying to keep up with Can-Am. Uh, uh, that's ironically how it started, because the Can-Ams were, were on top and they still are. So building the bigger engines, more and more stuff come out. Mr. RPM, stuff was more accessible. So as soon as so something becomes more accessible, people start using that. The R&D was there, the cams, the intakes, throttle bodies, board throttle bodies. So then it just amplified. People want to go faster. People always want to go faster. Mr. RPM stuff's never let me down. Is there other stuff that you can argue that it's better out there? Maybe. All I can say is he's made me win. He's made me build fast bikes. I'll tell you right now, it works. He's definitely, uh, he's definitely got a proper setup there. You've got the 860, which is a great product, a great build, got nothing but a good solid bike. It's kind of more geared, I believe, to trail riders. So if somebody who'd want a fresh top end build, they put the 860 in, you get a little bit more CC out of it. Where you guys were into building a mud bike. So here in Ontario, we have classes. The 860, it kind of put you out of that 850 bracket. So it put you at the low end of the CC scale. To race against a, a 976 or the 1000cc bikes with an 860, it probably wasn't the best way to go because that's your area. I felt for you guys, you can go, you can show up, you can race the 800 class, the 976 class, and the open class. You can up class in all the classes. And then it gives you a lot more pit time, a lot more fun. In my opinion, you'd be a lot more competitive with the 840. Yeah, the, the, the thing was you guys showed up with the, eight, the 860 with a set of my bags on a, on a Gen 1, right? So we've obviously got a 5 mil oversized valve in there that doesn't fit on an 840 piston. So the Mavhead's foil bearer, there's no denying that. So I wanted to keep the 840 with the eye compression, but I also wanted to make it with, with the, with the Mavheads. So what I ended up doing is getting a little bit creative with the relief, so used an 840 piston, messed around with the deck eye, a little bit and uh, we we basically made everything work everything's got a match better there's no there's no ifs ands or buts people say you don't need port the hats uh, they flow just as much you're not going to get more out of it well there's throttle response there's a lot of other things that's going on there's, we've ported ads for years and it's made power uh, open up the heads then we have to obviously match the intake um, taking that much material out the intake is uh, quite the task, but uh, everything has to match. There's no way of getting round it. And once we did the Mav ads, opened it up with the intake, with the 840, so put the 840 kit in, it really surprised us. Because once I had it on the dyno, the dyno showed that it made a serious amount more power than other 840s I've built before.
Like it, yeah, it's building so much faster. And it, I'm used to like snowmobiles with 170, 200 horse. And I mean, they hit like a, like a cat on a screen door. But this is the first ATV that I've ever got off of and thought, all right, we're definitely reaching the limit of how much horsepower we can use. By not just the Mavet, it's all about the porting to the intake, to the throttle body, everything has to work together. I can't stress that enough. So that's where a lot of people don't get, uh, along with the, how much air it's taking in, the air box, the whole nine yards. But that's why it makes more power. Periodically, the fastest 840 I've built. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race inspired performance. I've heard it said many times over the years that an engine is just an air pump, and the more you get in, the more you're going to get out. Well, Steve, he got a whole lot more in, and therefore, way more out. You know, you get more air in, that means you can mix it with more fuel. The more fuel you put in there, the more power you make. The more you compress that fuel, the even more power you make. So, you know, it's all about moving PSI. I mean, I think we were at somewhere in the region of 200 PSI a cylinder on your bike. It, it's a lot and it's, and it's, it's pumping good. And uh, I was really impressed with it. It's made up 130 cc's. It's made more power than 976s. They're built 976s with the same cam, the same intakes, and it's actually made more power. So it's pretty impressive. When I came up against Steve at, at the end, one of the first races that we had, because we had the fastest bike going into it, and we did, AJ actually had the fastest qualifying time all day. I knew we had a really good chance of beating him, but unfortunately, there's a couple of mistakes I made, and it had nothing to do with the bike. So I decided not to run in the slow lane like everybody else was all day. I decided to cheat it a little bit, move more into the middle. But unfortunately, I got too much traction, and I got into an uncomfortable situation, and the bike just seemed like it was it wanted to go sky high. The issue was is I had to let off, and letting off was half a second I knew I, knew I was done. Racing's all about a mental game. So what I should have done was I actually should have moved closer to him. Could get him to let off a little bit. I think that would have been a better, better game. The second round, unfortunately, I made another mistake. This next situation, I was like, okay, I got the faster lane now. Get on this, I have to be on the light. So unfortunately, I engaged the clutch at the wrong moment. And watching the replays now, I, I just shake my head. He just had the better jump. And once you engage that belt, it's just not the same. Just didn't have the power that I had all day. And we, we were the better bike. Unfortunately, it, it was my race to lose. And Steve and Luke did an amazing job um, getting as much as they could out of this bike, and it, and it showed. It, it was super fast. And we hope to do some races this year and, and put her to the test again. Okay, so I said I'd let Graham have the last word, but truth be told, I'm not done racing this thing yet. I mean, last year we got crushed at Minden because of motor issues, and that's where Steve Turner came up and first offered to help us. This year, we're gonna go back to Minden and we wanna see you come out and join us there. I mean, I would love to see a whole group of people come out and run their bikes. Sure, run against us if you want, but run against yourself and your buddies. It's gonna be a great time. I'm super excited, even after watching the last few minutes of this episode, it just gets me fired up and I wanna get back out there. I wanna squeeze the throttle. I wanna throw some mud, throw some dirt and have a good time. And I hope to see you not just in Minden, but in Powassan also, cause we're coming back and we're going for a victory. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. There's never a shortage of cool new products that show up here at Dirt Tracks TV, but every once in a while I like to take a closer look at some of those that I feel are more relevant for you and also that I've had firsthand experience with. 
Right up front, I've had the opportunity to use the Spot X two-way satellite communicator. It's a simple yet feature-packed, small, rugged, and durable device that doesn't just simply check in or give an emergency SOS message, it allows you to actually text through the GPS satellite network from anywhere in the world. I feel that the Spot X is really price friendly. It comes in at under 250 bucks and you don't have to buy a yearly contract. You can activate this thing month to month or just when you go out on a big adventure or a trip somewhere that you wanna feel the security of having the SOS feature and the two-way texting. After being part of a search and rescue effort last year for a lost ATV, I realized how important something like this is if you're riding alone or in a small group away from civilization. The waterproof, dustproof, and impact resistant housing will take a beating and with a 10 day battery life while tracking, you're covered even if you don't have a place to plug in. The keyboard is illuminated, so no problem using it at night, and it can even post to your social media network updates along your way. Now the most important feature, the SOS button, is hidden behind a snap closure lid and it'll bring in the cavalry, sending a message to the 24 seven monitored search and rescue center, allowing you to message directly with the folks who will be coordinating the help and also confirming when help is on its way. Now, when things are slightly less of an emergency, but you're still stuck trailside with a pinch flat or tire puncture, there's a lot of options out there, but one that I have found to be superior. Tireject is a no-nonsense tire puncture repair that doesn't require aerosol cans, sticky plugs, and rubber cement, or removing the tire from the rim to install a patch. Tireject is a proprietary blend of Kevlar and other fantastically smart stuff that will completely seal a puncture up to 3 8 of an inch. Not to mention, it'll allow you to air up a dry rotted tire, yeah, no joke, and seal slow leaks on the bead. Now this isn't some kind of a snake oil brand. Tireject works, and I'm talking every single time we use it works. And it's not the kind of stuff that you're gonna put in the tire, and then overnight, while you leave the repair, it's gonna fall out. This stuff is pretty incredible. Cool facts, Tireject is a family owned company who make their products in the USA. They're off-roaders and don't just make the product, they test it and use it themselves. Now something we know is inevitable in the off-road world is flats, so you can even pre-install Tireject into your tires and it'll do the job of fixing punctures as they happen. It doesn't ball up or gum up and is completely water soluble. So should you take the tire off the rim, it's a simple water cleanup, not a horrific mess like other tire sealant brands. Pre-filling or keeping a bag of this stuff in your glove box or trunk is a no-brainer. It's affordable, works every time, and comes with everything to get the job done. And you know you're gonna need it eventually. And speaking of going to need something, it's inevitable that your ATV or side-by-side -side are going to get dirty. Heck, your truck, your lawn tractor, or even your motorcycle are gonna get dirty. And a garden hose? Yeah, it just isn't enough to get a real dirty job clean. Sure, you can try to get a powerful nozzle for your mighty green garden hose, but it's useless. The only way to get the really stuck on dirt freed up and to get the impossibly gnarly crud out of those spaces between the skid plate and the engine case or from all those crevices around the engine is with power. And while there are a lot of power wash options, we've found that the PowerPlay brand to not just provide exceptional cleaning value, but a wide range of products with some very high-end long-lasting features. With options ranging from the 2030 PSI 1.4 gallon a minute Spider all the way up to the 4200 PSI 4.1 gallon a minute Terex, PowerPlay's got you covered whether your job is big or a little bit smaller. But when it comes to a power washer, it's my opinion that you get what you pay for. And on this Terex, you get a Honda GX390 engine and a genuine Anobi Reverb triplex pump. Now, what does that mean? Well, coming from a guy who's been power washing stuff since I was eight and got paid five bucks to clean mom and dad's trucks, I've been through a lot of power washers. And the combination of this motor and a true Anobi pump means this power washer is here for the long haul. Add in foam filled tires that will never go flat and a sturdy steel frame construction with hose, wand and nozzle storage and you've got one incredibly power-packed washer. And while something of this size would typically rattle around the driveway during use, its 145-pound design keeps it steady and secure no matter how long you're washing for. And this can be especially handy when doing tasks like stripping decks of old paint or stain. While there's always new ideas out there, it doesn't always mean that those new ideas are better. But when it comes to the products that I've shown you today, I've had first-hand experience with them, and they get my seal of approval for being exceptionally functional for the off-roader and very smartly designed. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. As the industry evolves and technology shifts, ATVs that once made sense start to look a little less understandable. On the flip side, ATVs that were once somewhat confusing start to make a lot more sense. You're thinking, what the heck does that mean? 
And the best way for me to explain it is with an example. And the example I have today is Yamaha's Kodiak 700 EPS. But before we talk about the Kodiak, we need to talk about the Grizzly. Now, everybody knows the Grizzly is getting a little long in the tooth, pun intended, in its current configuration. Realistically, it's seen very little major change over the past decade. If you ask just about any Yamaha diehard what they want most, they'll say they want a bigger motor in the Grizzly. And Yamaha has a motor that would work perfect. What I'm getting at is that the 700 single no longer makes sense in the Grizzly. It needs new technology and more power to stay valid. But that same 700 single makes perfect sense in the Kodiak. It was meant to be one step down from the Grizzly on the totem pole. It was meant to be a cheaper yet fully capable alternative for people who don't need the full jam of the Grizz. When the Kodiak was first reintroduced, it was very budget conscious. It came only as a 450, it had very few features, not even a gauge, and it got largely overlooked because while a decent deal, it just didn't provide enough of what even a deal-seeking ATVer really wanted. Now the Kodiak has taken its place as the official one-step down model from the Grizzly. It's cheaper and doesn't have quite the same level specifications, but it's fully capable and has all the stuff any hardcore ATVer could want or need. Just to be clear, everyone here at Dirt Tracks loves and has always loved this 700 motor. It has such great character and it's so tough, especially when combined with Yamaha's near bulletproof Ultramatic transmission. This big single loves to chug and has impressive torque at low RPM, but it also revs surprisingly fast and pulls pretty hard at top end as well. The Kodiak is its own platform and both 7.6 and 9.1 inches of travel front and rear from its independent double wishbone setup with rear sway bar. With 11.8 inches of ground clearance, the Kodiak gives up very little to its bigger brother. I think one of the most interesting aspects of the Kodiak is how small it feels when you're sitting on it. I attribute this to how the rider seems to sit more on top of the vehicle rather than down in the middle of it. When you sit on the Kodiak, you feel like the majority of the vehicle is below you with only the handlebars sticking out the top. This is very different from how it feels to sit on other brand ATVs, but with less bulk around you, the vehicle feels both smaller and lighter. Ergonomically, there's very little to complain about here. The seat is soft and is definitely comfortable to sit on. The floorboards provide excellent grip and the handlebars are in a very comfortable position. It all just fits. An incredibly smooth shifter, nice looking and very functional gauge, dual lever braking, and switch gear that, while not fancy in any way, works perfect, round out how the rider interfaces with the ATV and leaves us with very little to complain about. The Kodiak 700 comes in three flavors. There's the very stripped down base model that retails for a pretty impressive $69.99 US. Then there's the mid-level model that gets all the same mechanical features as the high-end model with less of the bling for $85.99 US. And then there's the full jam SE model that we have here. For $92.99, you get plastics painted in what I think is the nicest color on any ATV I've ever seen. Yamaha's on-command three-way locking differential and slick looking aluminum wheels. There's no question in my mind that the base model 700 Kodiak is a stellar value for a full-size big bore ATV. The mid-level model offers a significant increase in value over the base, and in my opinion offers the most usable performance for the money without any of the extra bling of the high-end model. But the EPS SE model definitely is the showstopper of the bunch, though real-world value over the mid-level model may be questionable for the average user. This next statement may be a little bit inflammatory, but I really think it needs to be said. The Kodiak 700 is the star of Yamaha's utility ATV lineup right now. It makes the most sense in terms of price versus performance and features. If nothing else, it will do a fine job of occupying the single cylinder 700 big bore space currently held by the Grizzly. That is, if Yamaha ever decides to take the Grizz to the next level.
Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Arctic Cat. Thanks for watching Dirt Tracks Television. For more great content, click on one of the links on the screen and make sure to tune back every day for fresh new content in season on Dirt Tracks TV.